Hello friends. So once again, welcome to my channel. And here I am there with your addressing mode in computer architecture course. So addressing mode is a very, very important topic in our architecture course because here from this topic we'll get question. We are going to expect questions from in your, in your gate exams, in your university exams. So this topic is very, very important with respect to this topic, right? So what is the meaning of addressing mode? First, let's start with that. Addressing modes tells us, uh, addressing mode is basically it is referring to the way in which we are going to specify our operand in an instruction. Operand may be there in register, may be there on the stack, it may be there in memory. If it is in memory, then how we are going to specify the address? What are the various possible ways of specifying the address? That we will see in the topic addressing mode. So I'm starting with the first one that is implied mode. In case of implied mode, in this mode, the operands are specified implicitly. What is the meaning of implicitly? Implicitly meaning is when we see the opcode, we know where will be our operand. Only as part of instruction, we are going to specify the operand. Say this example, COM. So looking at this COM, we know where is our operand. No need to specify any other operand, right? Implied, implied means what? It is understood, right? So looking at the opcode, we understand where is our operand. So in this case, COM is a opcode form. This in uh, instruct the in this particular instruction only opcode is there, and it indicates complement the content of your accumulator. So see if the content of accumulator is one zero one zero like this, zero zero one, then complement means what? Take the ones complement of it that reverse the bits, right? So this will be the result of COM. Where the result will be in the accumulator. Where was your operand? It was also in the accumulator. So see, implied mode, another name is what? Implicit. So in some book, it may be written as implicit. Implicit or implied mode, both are indicating the same meaning. That as part of the instruction, we are not going to specify any operand. Looking at the opcode, we know where we are going to get our operand, right? So implied mode is clear. Now see, another point we will analyze here. When we will execute this instruction, how many times we are going to refer to the memory? In this case, is there is any operand? No. So as part of operand fetch or result story, we need not have to do any memory operation. Only we require a single memory operation and that too for bringing this instruction from memory because we are following store and fetch concept. So first we need to fetch, we need to decode, then only we can go ahead. So to get the instruction from memory, we require one memory reference. This is understood. Next, I'm coming to the next addressing mode. Next addressing, so this is done already. Number of memory references, it is one. Then the next important addressing mode is immediate mode. In case of immediate mode, see the name immediate. In case of immediate mode, the operand is specified as part of the instruction itself. So when the instruction is with you, you need to understand the operand is also with you, right? So see, when we execute one instruction, where at all we'll get the instruction? In IR. Previously, it was there in memory. From memory, already we have fetched it. Now it is present in IR. It is being decoded. Then only we are executing it. So whenever I am executing, that time the instruction is there in IR. So in IR only, in some part, we'll get our operand, right, immediate. So the data will be, that op immediate operand will be somewhere in the IR only, right? No need to go to memory to get this 200 from uh, there, right? Because it is there as part of the instruction only, right? So this is called as immediate. Why the name is immediate? It is available immediately inside your instruction. No need to go to memory separately for bringing the operand. Due to that, it is said as immediate mode. Now the point is why that has 200 is there. That is one point. So see, and another one more important point here I would like to mention. And see, whenever I'm discussing these topics, here I'm following 
first one is source second one is destination now throughout i am going to use this convention for all my instructions i am going to follow this convention first part is of code then is your source and second operand is my destination so see here it is written has 200 why not only 200 what is the need of has because see 200 is a number one number in our assembly language code may represent a operand directly or may represent a address of an operand address of an operand so to distinguish whether this number 200 is representing an operand or an address of an operand to understand that distinction we are using the hash sign if one number is preceded by hash sign meaning is that number is a operand not an address operand right and this is clear why this hash is there now another one important point i would like to mention that whenever we are having immediate operand then it should not be there in the role of destination that is well understood because see inside a constant you cannot store something to store something it should be a placeholder placeholder means it should be a memory location it should be a register something like that but it cannot be a constant we never write in our high level language 10 equal to c plus 4 we never write like this yes or no here it should be a memory location you write like this and you compile your program you will get l value error what is l value that memory location is required in the left hand side of your assignment statement so if you are taking this one as the destination you are going to get error so this part is clear where you are going to get 200 as part of the instruction and already you have fetched the instruction so it is present inside your ir where is your ir inside the cpu so what this instruction is doing the value 200 is moved to the instruction r1 right so uh, to the register r1 not instruction to the register r1 the value is moved to register r1 so after the instruction is executed r1 will be holding the value 200 correct now see how many times i will refer to memory for executing this instruction so see one is obvious without looking at anything you can say at least one what is that one to fetch the instruction instruction is fetched now after fetching the instruction do you need to go to memory anymore where are your operands this is register it is part of cpu where is your 200 it is there inside your ir so to get this part of ir do you need to go to memory no because ir is already holding the instruction right so it uh, this one first this hash is used to indicate an immediate operand as a number may represent an address also so distinguish this two we are using this as sign next is for this instruction how many memory references that i was mentioning so it will be one how it is one is clear or not because 200 is part of your instruction you are not going separately by loading a new value into mar to get something from memory no because already the instruction is in ir ir is part of cpu so from that cpu part from that ir part we can get this 200 and we can transfer it into r1 so we are going to refer to memory only once this we have understood another point i had concluded that this 200 has 200 cannot appear as part of your destination one more point is there most of the architecture imposes one restriction though it is not mentioned but here i would like to tell you that we cannot write something like this move has 200 comma n this we won't write whenever we have got one immediate operand the next operand cannot be your memory operand reasons are there but that reason i will discuss later for present discussion the reason behind this is out of scope just i have mentioned this whenever we have one immediate operand the next operand should not be a register operand and this is imposed by most of this restriction is imposed by most of the architectures right so we have seen immediate implicit or implied mode up to here it is clear another next i'll move to register mode in case of register mode 
your data your content will be there in a general purpose register example a move r1 comma r2 so whenever i am doing move r1 comma r2 basically what i am doing i am transferring the contents of register r1 into register r2 yes or no so where is your r1 and r2 r1 and r2 both are present inside your cpu you remember that cpu diagram right that general purpose registers are here present so they are inside the cpu so for your opponents do you need to go to memory no for whom you need to go to memory to bring the instruction because we are following store and fetch concept so how many references do you need to have for this instruction only one why one because r1 and r2 are part of your registers are part of your cpu so to bring their value you need not have to go to memory hope this one is clear next i am coming to direct mode in case of direct mode your data is in memory do understand data is in memory that means to get data i need to go to memory this is clear so in this mode the operand is there in the memory and the address of the operand in which memory location your data is present that is given as part of the instruction that is given as part of the instruction so address is given as part of the instruction in case of direct mode and in case of immediate mode data is given directly as part of the instruction that is the difference so in case of immediate data is part of instruction and in case of direct another name is also there absolute mode in case of absolute or direct mode address of the data address of the operand is part of the instruction address is part of the instruction this i need to understand so example see example move num comma r2 what it does move 2000 comma r2 see this time also one number is there but in front of that number this it is not prefixed by hash sign what does it mean 2000 is not an operand it is an address number may represent a operand may represent address of an operand so here my 2000 is representing what my 2000 is representing the address of an operand right so see this num is written 2000 is written you instead of this num you can write loc you can write a b any variable name representing memory location so see this these are what symbolic name of your memory location the symbolic name will also represent some location numerically say it is representing 2000 so from memory location 2000 i am well i am sending one value to register r2 so what this instruction is doing is clear in memory location 2000 whose symbolic name is num one content is there that is 56 that i am transferring to register r2 that is the impact of performing this instruction so this part is clear now see how many times i have referred to memory to execute this instruction to execute this instruction first time we have referred to memory for getting the instruction that will be always there without doing anything at least one is coming another one will come as your data is in memory so you need to get the data from memory then only you can transfer it to r2 so from 2000 location or whatever address is represented by num from that location will do one read operation and that data will be transferred to r2 so how many times we have referred to memory two so number of memory references to execute the above instruction will be what two hope this one is clear if i'm if i do like this move r1 comma num or n that time also it will take two memory references because that time it will be a write cycle i'll be performing a write operation i'll get the instruction from memory then content of r1 will be written into memory location represented by the symbolic name n so we have referred to the memory total two times so this much is there in this video very soon i will come with your uh, next part of your addressing mode that is indirect addressing mode thank you and if you are liking my videos please share my videos like my videos and share to my channel sorry subscribe to my channel thank you